Hello, my name is Henry Christensen from Odense, Denmark. It's very important to know if you have a patient with ketotic hypoglycemia, whether the patient has a syndrome or not. It's also very important to diagnose ketotic hypoglycemia in patients with syndromes where there are symptoms compatible with ketosis and or hypoglycemia. Hello, my name is Austin Carrig. I am from the United States and I am the mom of a beautiful eight-year-old little girl named Melanie. Melanie was born with a number of medical conditions, one of which is Down syndrome. Along the way, we always noticed there were a lot of things that weren't quite normal, so to speak, for a baby. She often slept sometimes 22 hours a day. She was sweaty. There were so many things that just didn't feel right to us. But every time we took her to the doctor, they said she has Down syndrome. This is normal. This is to be expected. You're overthinking this. And as she's gotten older and older, it still nagged at us. She was two years old and not holding her head up. She couldn't sit up. And this, even for a child with Down syndrome, was at the very end of the developmental milestone goals. So we kept pushing and pushing for answers and they never came until we went home one year on vacation. That vacation was probably the worst that we'd ever have. She threw up and then we couldn't wake her up. And in the moments that we could, she would hit and scream and fight until she immediately fell back asleep. Knowing that something wasn't right, we took her to the emergency room and they did a blood sugar check where they determined that her blood sugar was 36. At that point, she wasn't responding to pain. She wasn't responding to anybody around her. She was just laying there as they stuck her with needles and tried desperately to get IVs. And over the next five days, they tried to find an answer. But again, they told us she has Down syndrome. There's probably nothing else wrong with her. This is probably just a fluke. On day four, they did a fasting blood sugar study and they told us they were going to fast her for 12 hours and that somewhere around hour eight, her blood sugar would probably drop and we would get the needed lab work to tell us what was wrong. At the point in time that they started the fast, they didn't have an IV in place because she was such a difficult stick. So they decided that at some point in the next few hours, they would try to get it. Three hours later, her blood sugar was 46 and we had no IV access. So Melanie had an IV placed in her jugular while she was awake because she was crashing and nobody knew how to save her. The doctors that day told us again, we don't know what's wrong with her. It's probably just Down syndrome. You need to get on a plane and go home. And we went home and we begged our doctors to let us see a geneticist who specializes in metabolic conditions. And we were denied because there could not possibly be anything wrong with your child besides Down syndrome. Being a military family means we move a lot. And in two years, we were moved to another state. And luckily in that state, we got a resident fresh out of medical school who we terrified with a long list of days full of low blood sugars and high ketones. And I think she was scared that if something went wrong, it was going to be on her. So she said, I'm going to send you to metabolic genetics and let them figure this out. And we went to metabolic genetics and they told us they could probably not tell us what was wrong with her, but they were going to run the lab work and they were going to see. Weeks later, while I was standing on the playground with her, we got a call from the genetics department and they knew what was wrong. She had a deletion in her chromosomes that was causing ketotic hypoglycemia and they started treatment. And within six months of her starting the treatment, she was walking. And now at eight, she's running and swimming and playing and be a really normal little kid who doesn't sleep all the time and isn't sweaty and irritable. And she's just the shining light in all of our lives. You have just heard about ketotic hypoglycemia in Down syndrome or trisomy 21. These children, they have various degrees of psychomotor retardation and poor growth. 
But if they also have ketotic hypoglycemia, this would definitely be important to diagnose and treat. Because if that is an often occurrence, they would do better after treatment. Fast forward a few years from our little girl's diagnosis and we were browsing Facebook social media groups looking for support in other families like ours. And we found a brand new patient organization, Ketotic Hypoglycemia International. And it was through that organization that I realized we weren't alone. There are a lot of other people with the diagnosis that our daughter has, and we're all looking for answers. I've been lucky that there's been an amazing team there who listens to us as parents when we speak and who find value in the things that we say and the other individuals that we come in contact with. And it was there that I said to them, look, I'm seeing a lot of other families just like mine whose children have Down syndrome and have ketotic hypoglycemia or sound like they probably do and that they're not getting the answers from their doctors, just like we couldn't get the answers from ours. And so we reached out and we said, look, you have to have somebody who can take this seriously. Just because our children have Down syndrome doesn't mean that they can't have another medical condition. And I'm really worried that kids are sick and they don't need to be because they just need treatment. It's really not known if there are any with Down syndrome with ketotic hypoglycemia, or how many having Down syndrome also have ketotic hypoglycemia? It was the executive director who then linked up with the scientific advisory board and they heard us. And through all of that, they listened and they've done a study that I think is going to change the way we look at Down syndrome and the symptoms and the things that we see in them and say, maybe these things aren't just Down syndrome, maybe there's something else. This questionnaire was not performed on an unbiased or unselected cohort of, of patients with Down syndrome. But still there's an idea that ketotic hypoglycemia may be quite frequent in Down syndrome as seen for other syndromes like Prader-Willi syndrome and silver Russell syndrome. So there will be more work to do on Down syndrome, whether they have frequent or not ketotic hypoglycemia. And that would be a major step forward if a lot of patients with Down syndrome could be diagnosed with ketotic hypoglycemia and treated. Maybe there are more syndromes out there where ketotic hypoglycemia may be frequent. If you have maybe just one patient with a syndrome and ketotic hypoglycemia, this could be a coincidental occurrence. But if you have more, you should go deeper into that. Today, I've been able to share with all of you the story of our beautiful daughter. And I want you to remember that there are children across the world just like her. There are families just like mine struggling and you have it in your hands to listen to them and to take them seriously and to a bare minimum, make sure that there is nothing else wrong. Because my daughter would have walked before she walked and she would have ran before she ran if somebody had listened and nobody did. I hope that the future will show more details on syndromes where ketotic hypoglycemia are frequent and that for children with ketotic hypoglycemia syndromes like silver russell should be diagnosed more frequently because this syndrome can be missed thank you and now with us we now have professor henrik christensen austin carrick and david weinstein for a live q a Hello, Austin. Hello. Hello. And hello, Henrik. And David. Hi. And welcome. Hi. So thank you for that presentation. And I have quite a lot of questions from the community 
with families who have a child with both Down syndrome and idiopathic ketotic hypoglycemia. So the first question is, is it possible that my child is experiencing delays beyond what is typically seen in Down syndrome due to ketotic hypoglycemia? So Henrik. Yeah, this is definitely possible. You can hear it from Austin's uh, video that the, if you have frequent uh, episodes of ketotic hypoglycemia, your development will not be normal. And, and the huge change that happened in Austin's child is suggestive of that this may be something that occurs in, in many other children with Down syndrome. That I think I can direct to David because I have a question from a mom asking, I am curious about the thoughts on the incident of GSD and or idiopathic ketotic hypoglycemia in children with Down syndrome and that this possibility that is, it, it is often missed. What are we going to do about this? Well, I first of all would like to just second what Hendrik just said. I fully believe that too often we have accepted the delays in children with syndromes like Down syndrome or Prader-Willi syndrome is due to the disorder and that the hypoglycemia may be making it worse. And we have seen in many of the children treated with syndromes improvement when we um, avoid hypoglycemia. So I think this is very important to discuss. Um, I think the we have seen Down syndrome with glycogen storage disease. We have seen Down syndrome with ketotic hypoglycemia. Getting the word out and the work that's being done by Ketotic Hypoglycemia International to support this project to formally study it will be critical. And I think as the word gets out, more children will get diagnosed and we can improve the course of the, of, of the children. Talking about, there will be a paper published about Down syndrome and Ketotic Hypoglycemia, hopefully very soon written by Austin Carrick, David Weinstein, myself, and Henrik. So follow KHI, and I, um, I promise you that we will post this all over the social media kind of channels. So I have a question now from Rosa, who has a little child called Puppy, and Puppy is admitted at the hospital right now due to infections. And Rosa asks, due to Down syndrome, our child has an impaired immune system. As a result, we have to do regular IV antibiotics, which seems to have a huge impact on the blood sugars. Is there any resource on this? We have tried a couple of times of antibi other antibiotics with similar, similar effects. So, antibiotics and low blood sugar in Down syndrome. Yeah. Yes, I can. Henry? Yes, um, I don't know about any connection uh, to antibiotics, but I think that maybe when you give antibiotics, uh, you forget to, to give uh, glucose. Or, uh, if the antibiotics is given uh, within one hour or more, the patient may not get any glucose at the same time. And that is needed if, if uh, she's low. Thank you so much. And I think we have some problems with your video, but we can hear you loud and clearly. So that's, that's great. Then I have a question again from a mom to a child with Down syndrome and IKH. How do I get a provider to take seriously my concerns about ketotic hypoglycemia diagnosis, where the symptoms are just often blamed as Down syndrome? So, Henrik. Well, I think Austin's uh, case uh, video was the first step because this has inspired to a questionnaire uh, on your web uh, page. Uh, yes. To, to try to evaluate how often is it that uh, there's ketotic hypoglycemia and Down syndrome. And when we publish this, this may have a good impact on spreading the knowledge uh, of, of this uh, problem. 
And it's the only way we can move forward is uh, spreading the knowledge in scientific papers and uh, on web pages like yours. Thank you, Henrik. And now we have a question for Austin. Austin, what has been the most mm -hmm. hard part of having a child with both Down syndrome and catartic hypoglycemia and how do you manage? I would say the hardest part is getting people to listen, which I think is what the last question alluded to. We spent a lot of time collecting data and we didn't just get to be parents. We spent a lot of time writing things down and tracking trends to prove that we weren't crazy, that we really knew something was wrong. And we've spent a lot of time dispelling the myth that you can only have one thing wrong with you. And that has probably been the hardest because when you know your baby is in pain and you know something's wrong, all you want to do is make them better. Now I will direct the question again to you, Austin. We have a lot of families listening out there who also has a child with Down syndrome and catartic hypoglycemia and some just are suspicious of catartic hypoglycemia. If you were to give an advice for those families, what would it be? Test, test all the time, trust your gut, keep track of your numbers. A lot of times, you know, we talk about it just being food. It took a long time for somebody to take us seriously and they only did that after we were able to provide a log that showed, you know, she wakes up and she's low and her ketones are high. This can't be normal. This shouldn't happen every single day even when we know she is not sick. Thank you so much, Austin. And now I want to thank you all for being a part of this Q&A and for being a part of this uh, paper that we are writing and publishing soon. So thank you both. And I will move forward to the next presentation.